Hi guys, my name is Talini Fashanti and welcome back to my uh, beginner's guide to submarining. So today I'm going to go over a guide to the different parts as well as how to make your own submarine parts. I'm going to be making a Sildred class bridge as well as a modified Sildred class bridge so you can see how to make modified parts. So we're going to go over to our fabrication station. You're going to notice that I am a disciple of the hand. You have to be a disciple of the hand in order to progress um, in making the actual parts. So it's moved between the different steps. So I'm going to go into the company crafting log and I'm just going to open up the log here so you can see these different types of parts. There are four different types of submersible parts, a hull, a stern, a bow, a bridge. And you must always have one of each equipped on a submarine for it to remain intact. The only way to completely get the parts off a submarine is to dismantle it, and you do not want to do that because it's going to reset all your levels on that submarine and undo what could be, you know, four months of work. So one thing that's very important to do is if you're, say, taking a part off a submarine to modify it is to have placeholder parts. Shark parts are great for that, as well as any old parts you have lying around in the workshop that are just extra. So I want to talk about the different types of parts first before I go into building. So like I said, there's a hull, a stern, a bow, and a bridge. If you look at any of the materials in the submarine discord, um, which there will be a link to that in the description of this guide, as well um, as a link to Pepper's Guide, which is a wonderful text guide. Um, that goes over basically all the different things about submarining as well as airships and what you need to know. Um, I don't cover airships that much because I hate them, but if I get enough demand, I might eventually do an airship video. So the submarine has four different parts, a hull, a stern, a bow, and a bridge. Um, sometimes you'll see different abbreviations in different guides and maybe you'll see something like CUYC or uh, CUYC++ or you'll see SSSY++ or you'll see SSSS. Uh, those letters refer to, in order, the hull, the stern, the bow, and the bridge. Each letter refers to a different part. S is shark, U is unku, whale is W, Coelacanth is C, and Sildra is Y. Why is Sildra Y? Because both S and Shark and Sildra both start with an S, but Sildra has a Y in it, and we didn't want to have two different abbreviations for S, so we have Sildra is Y. Um, plus, in an abbreviation, refers to Modified. Modified is a direct upgrade from its predecessor type of part. So if you compare, say, a Sildra class pressure hole here, um, surveillance 10, retrieval 75, speed 30, range negative 15, favor 5. To a soldier class pressure hull, you can see that the soldier class pressure hull that's modified has a little more retrieval. Surveillance is the same, the speed is the same, the range is the same, and the favor is 5 higher. So that's what modifying the part does, is it just kind of bumps up those same stats a little bit. Um, it'll never reduce any of those stats, it's just a bump up. Um, so, you know, keep those in, keep that in mind if you're deciding whether or not to modify a part. Um, and I'll go over a few other things about modified parts in detail as I go over each type of part. So shark class parts, um, they are the only parts you can equip when your submarine is below rank 15. They're kind of your bread and butter. So any submarine that you are going to start leveling is going to use all shark class parts. So you can equip those starting from rank 1. Um, and an all shark build is actually okay for leveling. Um, you can level with it all the way up to 90. Um, they're inexpensive to make. It costs about 200,000 gil in materials to make a shark class part. Um, and so for an entire sub, it's about 800,000 gil to make one. Um, whereas I see people selling them in sets for 4 to 5 mil. So it's very worth making them yourself if you have the time and uh, patience to do so. Um, but the thing about shark class parts is a full shark class sub tends to be pretty fast, um, has decent range, 
uh, your surveillance isn't going to be very high, your retrieval isn't going to be super high, and your um, favor isn't going to be super high, so you're not going to be getting like top tier materials with shark parts, just regular old shark parts on their own, but it's good enough for leveling and it's inexpensive. Um, so shark class parts aren't to be overlooked. You can unlock the ability to make shark class parts um, with Submersible Prototype 1 on the schematic board, which you can find inside the workshop. So next, and this is unlocked with uh, Submersible Prototype 2, is the Unkyu class parts. Um, so Unkyu class parts you can equip starting at rank 15. Um, the stats on them are a little different, they're not universal per part. So if you look at, say, the hull, which I have pulled up here, an Unkyu class hull compared to a shark class hull has more range, a little more surveillance, has less retrieval, the speed is slower, um, and the favor is a little less. Uh, so with Anki class parts, it's a nice little bump up if you're leveling um, to swap out some of your shark parts for Unkyu, but it's not necessary. Um, and you can equip those, like I said, starting at rank 15. Unkyu parts uh, are pretty common in a lot of different types of farming builds. If you're at rank 15 or so, maybe you're rank 20 and you want to, say, up the speed of your submarine, give it a little more range, and swap out the bow um, and maybe the bridge. For Unkyu parts, and that's going to be a decent little upgrade for you. And if you were to abbreviate that build, it would be SSUU. So next you have whale parts, and whale parts uh, are unlocked with Submersible Prototype 3. Um, a full whale sub is a pretty common meme among submariners. If anybody tells you to build a full whale sub, they are trolling you. Do not do it. Um, because a full whale sub, and the reason, you know, that you shouldn't build a full whale sub is because it's going to be really, really slow. Um, the surveillance on it isn't going to be very high, so you're not going to be getting great loot. And it's just going to kind of slow down your whole leveling process and going to be pretty expensive to do so um, to make that full whale class sub. That's not to say that whale class parts don't have their uses. A whale class bridge is used in one of the really common speed builds that people make to speed up the living process. Um, and then the whale class hull, whether it's the standard one or its modified counterpart, is used in a few different types of farming builds because it has a very high retrieval stat. Um, and a retrieval stat, a high retrieval stat, is really useful when you're making builds for farming uh, submarine exclusive materials. Things like camasite, things like um, cryptomeria lumber, and pure titanium ore when you want large quantities of those materials because you're farming them. Not so useful for things like farming minions and furniture and things like that. So you can equip those starting at rank 25. Um, don't make a full whale sub. It's not a good investment, but in the future, you know, you might run into situations where you're using um, a whale part or two in a build uh, as, as a component. So next at rank 35, you can start equipping coelacanth parts, and coelacanth parts are pretty good. For the most part, um, they have a very high surveillance. Um, one of the cheap farming builds that some people will use is called CUCC. Ha ha ha, it's cuck. Um, and it uh, has enough surveillance to find anything on the map. It's not going to have high retrieval, it's not going to be double dipping, but you are going to be able to find any item. Um, so if you're trying to farm minions for your FC on the cheap, or if you want to farm furniture on the cheap for your FC at those really late stage sectors in the Sea of Jade, but you um, don't want to make like a full modified set, and that would be best in slot for those sectors, um, then you can make that build that I talked about, which is primarily coelacanth parts. Um, coelacanth parts show up a lot in terms of uh, different types of farming builds. It's, it's a really useful type of part, and you can unlock that with Submersible Prototype 4. Submersible Prototype 5 unlocks Sildra class parts, and Sildra class parts aren't equipable until rank 45. Um, Sildra class parts also show up in a lot of farming types of builds. Um, 
if you can see from the hole, it has like this really nice high retrieval stat, which again, retrieval is really great if you're farming uh, materials that are exclusive to submarines that drop in bulk, like camasite, um, which that brings me to why soldier class parts tend to be more expensive to make than other types of parts because they use this material called camasite here. Camasite ore drops from a few different sectors um, and it's exclusive to submarines. Uh, camasite ore, depending on your data center, probably goes for anywhere from, I don't know, 6K to 10K a pop these days. And you need three camasite ore to make one camasite. Uh, so you need nine camasite per soldier part. So it adds a lot to the cost, whereas a lot of these other types of materials that go into the other uh, types of parts, like if you compare um, to say a coelacanth hull versus a soldier hull, it's gonna be using things like mithrite ingots, cobalt rivets, um, mithrite ingots are vendor purchasable, so you know that you can, you know, worst case scenario, get these for about 2.5K a pop, um, as opposed to nine camasite is probably gonna run you, I'm really bad at math, but, um, you know, nine camasite times three times, let's say, 10K, that's like 270,000 gil just to get one material for your soldier class uh, part. So it makes soldier class parts more expensive, but they are decent parts. Again, they show up in farming builds. Um, they show up as a modified part in the best in slot build, uh, which uses a modified soldier class bow. Um, so those are gonna be things that uh, you know you may use, um, but just bear in mind that they are a little bit more expensive to make than other parts. So soldier class parts, like I said, you can unlock those um, with submersible prototype five and start equipping them at rank 45. At rank 50, you can start equipping modified parts. And modified parts are a direct upgrade from uh, their standard part and the way you make a modified part is you first make the regular class part and then you go to an NPC in the housing district, uh, I believe it's a material supplier, and you can trade that part for a frame. So if I were making a shark class bow, I would make the full shark class bow with all these materials here that you can see. I'm not making it because I don't need one. And then I would go to the NPC, trade it in for a frame, and use it as an ingredient in making the new part. So the thing about modified parts is you can't equip them to rank to, until rank 50. At rank 50, you can equip a full submarine of modified parts. Um, so modified parts are very expensive to make. It costs at least probably 1 million gil per part to make for a lot of them um, because of the cost of two types of materials and that's the cryptomeria lumber and the pure titanium ore they are used for making uh, cryptomeria logs and are used to make cryptomeria lumber and pure titanium ore is used to make pure titanium plates those like camasite are both submarine exclusive materials so they're pretty expensive. Um, I think pure titanium ore, I'm on ether, and pure titanium ore is like 10K right now. Cryptomeria logs are a little less for whatever reason. They're like six to seven K. So that's again, like camasite gonna drive up the cost of making the parts, make them a little more expensive. Um, so it's like, if you're looking at just in the cost of those two mats, like around 500,000 gil uh, for making a modified part. But the thing about modified parts is, is that they do significantly increase the stats. Um, so they can modifying a part can be the difference between meeting a certain breakpoint for a zone and being able to get that good loot, which is what we are here for. We are here to get the good loot and make some gill. I hope. So um, the only other thing to uh, keep in mind about these different types of parts is the amount of repairs that they cost. So if I'm looking at a shark class bow. Uh, like I said before, it only costs me one set of Magitech repair materials. Um, those are those repair materials that we were looking at before. Um, in order to repair it, Umpu takes two. 
Whale takes three. Sealy Camp takes four. Soldier takes five. Modified parts take a whopping six sets of Magitech repair materials each to repair. So one of the things that um, I always like to bring up is think about your ongoing repair costs when you're making a build and how much it's going to cost you in future runs in order for you to keep your submarines running. So now that we've gone over all those, and the Submarine Discord uh, is a great resource on these. The other um, really good resource that I always like to point people to is Pepper's Guide. Uh, Pepper wrote an amazing guide to submarines that's in text. It's a little bit dense and kind of hard to figure out, but um, if you're very new, and but it's an invaluable resource if you are a submariner to learning about uh, submarines and airships, what they do, how they work, so I can always put those. So I prepared by getting all my mats together ahead of time in my inventory. We're in my main workshop here on my main character, so you can see that I have a lot of junk in here that I probably don't need for crafting, but I just carry this stuff on me at all times because I'm a pack rat. So we're gonna make a soldier class bridge. So in order to make a soldier class bridge, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select it here. And I'm just gonna hit begin. It's gonna take me to confirmation screen. And then we have this window here where I can contribute materials to the company crafting log. Just continue the project or cancel out. So to contribute materials, I'm just gonna go in here. And I'm just gonna start feeding in stuff. So for my first step, I need 30 mithrite ingots, 30 cobalt rivets, 30 or Regis nuggets, and 15 gold ingots. And I have all this stuff in my inventory. Um, one of the things is, is a lot of, most of the time, I only use normal quality stuff. High quality doesn't make a difference. Um, some people think it contributes to construction quality, but really, it is all RNG. So I fed in my mithrite ingots here, and you can see that this construction quality went up a little bit. This doesn't really mean anything, <laughs> um, but the higher your construction quality gets, the higher chance you have to get excellent or outstanding conditions. If we get one of those, I'll kind of go over it, but essentially what excellent does is it reduces the amount of materials you need for the next step by one third. If you get outstanding, it reduces it by two thirds. But it's all RNG dependent, you're not guaranteed to get it and using HQ materials doesn't up the chance that you're going to get it. So it's cheaper to buy normal quality materials than 99% of the time. Just use normal quality materials and if you want to save on inventory space, reduce high quality materials to normal quality. And in case you don't know how to do that, I'll just show you how to do that really quick because I have some high quality gold ingots in my inventory. So I just click on this that says lower quality. And then I can combine the stacks. And that saves me an inventory spot in my super crowded, disgusting inventory. So now I'm going to feed in my cobalt rivets. And I'm just using my number pad to do this. Um, if you have a controller, that works as well. Or you can point and click. I just use the number pad to make it faster for me. I'm going to feed in my orange Regis nuggets. It's going to ask me if I want to advance to the next stage of production. If I advance to the next stage of production, it gives me a cutscene. By the way, none of these cutscenes in the workshop or when you're sending a submersible in and out are skippable. Like, that's the auto thing. Oh, excellent progress made. Hooray. Um, so, you can't, like, toggle a thing in your menu to always skip the cutscenes, which is super annoying. If you've seen them 800,000 times, you just kind of have to play the game where you're hitting escape and canceling out the cutscene. So since I got excellent, see how my materials are filled in partially by one third? That just means I only have to turn in one third as many materials when I'm crafting the next bit. I'm going to feed in my six stark steel plates. And then my titanium makers. And my dark steel roots. And my birch lumber. That I'm an 87 out of 100. Are we gonna get an excellent or an outstanding? Are we gonna get anything? It's kind 
like my little game to watch these cutscenes and see what it's going to give me. Excellent again. So I'm going to have the next step reduced by one third. And this is all RNG. You can't bank on it. All it does is, you know, save you a little bit on materials, but I always keep stock of stuff because I have to make so much. Um, but other things I do is I uh, run submarines or don't want to do it themselves. Um, so I'm always making parts. I always like to have stock of stuff. I'm just feeding all my stuff in here. Now, if you get excellent or outstanding on the last step, it doesn't carry over to when you make a part next. Um, what it does give you is extra FC credits um, and extra FC leveling progress, which is awesome. If you need those. Yeah, see, I got excellent completion. Great. Um, it doesn't mean anything. It's not going to carry over. Uh, it doesn't do anything for me other than give me some bonus FC credits. So I'm just going to collect my finished product here. Um, so normally I would, in order to make a modified part, go over to the little NPC in the housing district, but I already have a silver frame from when I made one before. This is kind of like on a cooking show when they, you know, like make the food and then they bring it out of the uh, oven right after they put it in because they already had one pre-made. That's what I like to think of. So I am going to make a modified soldier cl class bridge. So like I said, you need to have that soldier class frame and you get that from making the base part and then taking it to the NPC in the housing district and saying, hey, give me a frame for the bridge. Once you turn a part into a frame, um, the parts will stack. Normal parts do not stack. Uh, also, a frame um, will not be bound um, after you put a part on a ship and complete a voyage with it, it binds to you and the FC. So you can put it in the FC chest, but you can't trade it um, from player to player or put it on the market board after that. Once you turn something into a frame, it becomes a market prohibited item that you can trade from player to player, but you can't use it as is or convert it back to a regular part. You can only use it as an ingredient in making modified parts. So let's make a modified soldier class bridge. Yes, I want to craft it. So I'm going to contribute materials, and again, I already have all this stuff on me because I prepared ahead. So I'm feeding my frame in, I'm feeding my galvanized garland steel in. I'm at 100 out of 100. Let's see if it wants to behave today and give me something good. So that's going to save me some money uh, by giving me one third less materials required here. I'm just going to feed in Cryptomeria Lumber. And you'll notice that I have high quality Cryptomeria Lumber. Um, one of the things about Cryptomeria Lumber and uh, pure titanium plates is that you can't quick them them. This turns hates us. So I have to manually craft them, and I just have a two-step macro that hits trained eye and groundwork. So you get bonus FC credits for making high-quality crafts, so I just do that because uh, I need all the FC credits I can get for Cerulean tanks. So we have another cutscene, and then it's going to take me to step three progress made. So see, it's RNG, you don't get it every time, and it doesn't matter how high the quality is. I think I had like 79 quality there or something like that. So again, pure titanium plates. I'm just going to put that in here. And a lot of the stuff you might notice, you can buy from a vendor, like adamantite rivets, you can buy from a vendor. Rodenite, you can buy from a vendor. Heart silver ink you can buy from a vendor, um, but sometimes you can, you know, you can also just gather the stuff for those cheaper. Obviously, if you have the time to do so, I am short.
short on time and long on gill, so I prefer to buy stuff. Um, you can also sometimes find better deals on the market board for less than what it costs to buy it from the vendor, or honestly, you know, the time spent to gather it yourself can be better used making gill on other things. We're gonna complete the construction. Limit 93 out of 100. See if it gives me some kind of bonus on completion, which again, let me carry over to the next one. Outstanding completion. There we go. My favorite thing. I say that with full sarcasm because all it gives me is bonus FC credits. It doesn't actually save me anything. So now I'm just going to collect my finished product. Now that's ready to go on a submarine. So that's. Um, I wouldn't say a brief overview of the different uh, types of submarine parts as well as how to craft them on your own, um, but that gives you an idea of what all the different types of submarine parts are good for, what they're used for. Um, in my next video, what I'm planning on doing is going over the uh, methods you can use to plan your farming routes and theory craft for the type of loot that you want to farm. Um, so I'm not inclined to give out preset builds, but instead teach you how to farm things on your own um, because then you'll have the knowledge to do it yourself. If you want to know what the best in slot is for farming a particular thing, you can go to the submarine discord. I have a link in the description of this video as well as my previous video. Um, and they can assist you there as well, as well as assist you with using calculators and loot tables. But I'll be explaining the calculators and loot tables in my next video. Thanks for watching. Um, hope you have a good day and happy submarining.